Hi everyone, Mr. K here at Santa Ana High School. I'm here doing another video for the 2017 Elementary Honor Orchestra for Santa Ana Unified School District. Uh, in this video, I'm going to play through the cello part uh, of Frog in a Tree by Edmund Sinecki. So uh, I'm going to play it straight down and then I'll go back and review it and discuss all the little things that you need to look for in your practice. So. Frog in a tree. First of all, we have double stops. And double stops means you're going to play two notes at one time. So in this case, the first two notes we have in the piece are D and A, but they're stacked on top of each other. So that means we're playing both D string and A string. To achieve a good double stop, you want to make sure your bow is right in between both strings, which is kind of hard because I'm sure when you first started, you couldn't keep your bow on one string. Now we're asking you to go back and play both strings yet again, but now in more of a controlled manner. So we're playing both notes evenly. Now, the other thing when we play is to keep our bow attached to the strings. We don't want it to always lift. So when we play, there should not be a lift. Right? It needs to stay on the string like a sticky bow. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. 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 And then here at measure three, we have a down bow and then a comma. A comma means to retake. But before we start playing again, you need to make sure you set your bow so it's starting in the string. Don't retake your bow and start from above the string. It's not going to get a good sound. So always have it in the string and then pull. Set. So measure three, rest, rest, right? Uh, be careful, I just misplayed that. At measure four, these are not double stops anymore, it's just open A. So it's really important, measure four, that we don't play the open D. Then measure five, we have a lot of the string crossing back and forth. Now the type of bow stroke you should be using for pretty much the entire piece is going to be detta shape. So having a separation between each bow stroke. So there's a clean beginning and end of the note before you do the new one. Instead of... Right? That's too connected. 
So, measure five, be careful that we have good debt to shame. Right, and then make sure you keep your hand set so that when you get to all those open strings, to that GD. Here, it's kind of an advanced concept for beginners, but or I should say elementary kids, you want to make sure you set your fourth finger on both strings. So measure six. If you set it on the D string and the A string, then you don't have to hop, right? If you just set it on both, you just rock your bow. Now the other thing is to make sure that you have a good left hand. If your left hand is at a funny angle or you're reaching back, then that means your pinky's going to come at an angle. And if it's coming at an angle, then one string is going to be a little bit higher than the other, and then it'll be out of tune. So make sure that you basically bring the hand down. You don't have to have the elbow so high. You just want to make sure that your pinky or any other finger when it goes down across two strings is perpendicular to the string. Perpendicular is a fancy word for right angles. So if your string is going up and down, then your bow is going to make a perfect cross 90 degrees from the string. So that way, when we hit both notes, G to D, it's in tune, right? So just double check. Try and look to see if you're making a right angle or not with your hand. Um... Let's see. That was measure six, right? So right angle with the pinky. All that with a good detache stroke all the way through. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, just be careful of the third fingers when you play the C sharps and the F sharps. Uh, measure 13 is more of the same. Be careful on measure 14. You're going from a G to a B, G to a B, back and forth, right? And then uh, measure 15 is back to D and A, but 16, double stops. You can really lay in strings, especially because we're playing the C string. Very rarely do, do cellos get to play that open string in orchestra. So when you get it, play it out. Right? Dig in on those guys. And then 17 is more of the same. G, E. And then 16. So when you do half note, if you wait till the end of the half note to do your bow lift, you're going to be late. So you're going to lift on the end of the half note. One, two, and then you're in for one. Or sorry, three, four, one. Right? Then when we get to 21, you guys have the tune. So we need to make sure that we play this out. Notice the dynamic is still forte. Right? But know that all of what we did before was accompaniment because the violins have a melody. Now it's your turn. 21. We can play this out just a little bit more. Now, anytime you have the eighth notes, um, I teach bow divisions. So if you have quarter notes, you should be using pretty much your full bow. But when you have eighth notes, two eighth notes especially, you want to use only a small part of your bow. So if you're going to use a full bow for the quarter note, then the two eighth notes are going to be short, short, or small, small at the tip, right? So down, short, short, and then if we have another quarter note, which we do, and then we have two more small eighth notes, you're going to have small bows here. But always alternate. So if you go down bow, then the next one's going to be up, down, and then up, next one's going to be down, up, right? 
So try and add those bow divisions in there. It makes your sound a lot cleaner instead of using such big bows. Right? It doesn't sound very good. But if you control your bow... Now, measure 20, what is that, 24. 24 might be the hardest measure in the whole piece for the cellos. That starts on an up bow and you have to slur two. So G, A has to go up bow, G, F has to go down bow, and then E as your half notes. So I would practice it slowly, set your G, and then as you do that G, try and keep it down, because you're only gonna come back to that G. So you have to make a good tunnel, so that your fingers are not touching the A string, but it's only touching the D string while you're holding that G down. So G, A, G, F, practice it slow, get that slur, the other slur. G then put it together. And then speed up. And then eventually you got it. So it takes some practice, but you want to make sure that measure is really good, nice and clean. I'm sure if you played that accurately, the rest of this will be a piece of cake. And then when you go and play this for your teacher for your recommendation, They'll say, oh, you're definitely ready for honor orchestra. So be aware of measure 24. Measure 25 is more of the same. So it's like 21. Slur up bow again, but these are quarter notes, so it's not as fast. Right? Quarter notes, two quarter notes is the same thing as a half note, right? So your bow is going to basically do two beats up a one, two, you're just changing the note. One, two, three, and right. So be careful. Don't rush the choir notes when they're slurred. One, two, three, and four, one. And then you have one, two, three, right? And then we go on, measure 29. With 29, it's uh, the counter melody, so you want to make sure that this comes out. 29 has more of those same kind of slurs, so be careful that you're keeping the bow in the string. Slurring, so practice it nice and slow. And then try and keep it down, so like I talked about before, keeping good tunnels. So that if we're going from F sharp to A, that you don't lift the fingers so we don't hear that open D, right? So keep the tunnel down as you go from F sharp to A. So that was measure 29. Um, yes, measure 29. And then back to G. 20. Oh, sorry, 31, it's very similar, but you don't have any more string crossings. Oops. And here it is again, open strings, especially that C string, so pull it out. And cheat that half note, so retake before the downbeat. Make sure you start from the string. Same kind of thing at measure 34. Three. So when you play that, it's exactly the same as measure 29. Right? And then from 34. With a good detache stroke. When we get to 37, this is where we can be more legato. And it's also piano. So we have to really be light with the bow. As light as we can and keeping it nice and um, legato, connected. So, when
when you go through and practice that, I would practice it slow. I would try and keep those fingers down so that you're making those tunnels all the way through. And pl try and play as soft as you can. Don't play so soft that uh, you're only using a small amount of bow. So. It's not a good sound. So use plenty of bow. Just think of a lighter bow and not as much weight. Then when we get to measure 45, Plenty of weight because we're back to being forte. More of that C string, G string double stuff, right? Same thing, measure, it's kind of hard for me to see these uh, measure numbers. 49. legato which is smooth and connected on all of those half notes but when we come to those quarter notes let's go ahead and go back to detache and then same thing for 51 legato detache and then we have all these bow lifts every time you lift make sure you set your bow before you pull set 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 And then uh, in there, when it says sim or simile, that means keep it the same. So always retake every time you see those rests. But that's pretty much it for Frog in the Tree. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, make sure you ask your teachers. I'm sure they'd be happy to help you. Um, so I wish you guys the best of luck and happy practicing. <laughs>